Hello and welcome back to another lightning tutorial. In this one, we will go deeper into the um, torch metrics. Uh, so basically, for many, um, you know, for many commonly used metrics, such as what we're using here, accuracy, or you could do uh, if you're doing F1 score, AUROC, or even more complex ones like mean average precision. Uh, many of them, or most of them, are covered by torch metrics already, and so. We're just going to see how we can utilize the ones that already exist. And if it doesn't exist, if you want to do some custom metric, how we, you can build your own basic ones so you can see how they're structured. Um, all right, so what we're going to do first is we're just going to copy uh, the uh, folder from the previous one into a new one called the metrics. And then we're going to do pip install torch metrics. Now, I think this should, this might already be, be installed. I'm not sure. Uh, it was for me at least, and I don't think I've in installed it previously, but just for safety do pip install torch metrics, we're going to use that. And then let's open the file. Uh, I just want to show you, so what we're doing now, right, is we're doing this check accuracy that we implemented ourselves. So this is very error prone. It's going to be sort of just a lot of messy code that you copy paste from project to project. Um, you, you know, definitely want to use it if it's already if, if it's already sort of tested by lightning and so on. So we're gonna uh, do that here. We're gonna do import torch metrics and we're gonna do from torch metrics import metric. We're gonna use this metric thing when we implement our own metric, uh, which is the um, our sort of parent class. So what we're gonna do first of all though is we're just gonna do self.accuracy, which is gonna be the um, torchmetrics.accuracy. If we go to that one, uh, you can basically see here that you send in the task, which in this case can be binary, multi-class, or multi-label. You send in a threshold, uh, num classes, num labels, and so on. Uh, the thing we're gonna need to send in now is just task is multi-class, and the num classes equals num classes. Uh, we can also do other metrics so that we could do f1 score uh, it's going to be torch metrics dot f1 score and i'm going to link the uh, documentation so that you can see all of the things that they have but we have task multi-class num classes again in this case you know the accuracy and the f1 score are going to be identical because we have evenly distributed uh, classes but uh, just so you know how how you can use it you also have AUROC. Um, we're not going to use that now, though. And then uh, we can start off with that. But uh, I think you get the idea of how you use it. If we go to Torch Metrics, you can see here that these are some of the basic ones that they have, like the Cohen Kappa, Confusion Matrix, Dice Score, uh, Jacquard Index, Recall, Precision Recall Curve. Uh, mean average preci precision, uh, a bunch of them I actually don't know what they are exactly, and then you have blue score. We basically know that there's a bunch of metrics now that we can use, and let's try to use them. So here in the training step, we're going to compute our accuracy, which is self.accuracy. We can also compute the F1 score, and then instead of logging it the way that we are now, we can log a dictionary which basically we can send in everything at the same time. So we send in the training loss, the training accuracy, and the uh, F1 score. Um, now, actually this, um, and we're gonna see in a s future video that this is a little bit slow, uh, where if we look at, if we use something called a profiler, we can see where the computation is, is being spent. And in this case, the accuracy and the F1 score is actually taking up a lot of the computation probably because we're using such a small neural network. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we can we can um, do we can compute this in other stuff so that we can uh, make it more efficient. I'll show you how we can do that in just a second. But for the log dictionary, we can um, we can specify when we want to update it. So in this case, the training is really fast for each batch. So on step, it's going to you know, you're not going to be able to see it anyways uh, in this case. And if we do on epoch equal, equals true instead, it's going to update at the end of each epoch, make, making it more, uh, you know, less clutterly. Clutter, cluttery, is that how you say it? I don't know. 
So then we have a progress bar. Uh, in this case, we're going to set it to true because we want it to show up. You know, in general, you would log this to TensorBoard, and I'm going to show you how to do that probably in the next video or the one after that. But uh, we can use it like this for now. All right, so if we try to run this now, uh, we should uh, probably, we should not get an accuracy in the beginning, right? Because it's not going to be updated every step. But if we now look at the end, we can see that the mean accuracy over the epoch was 88%, and then it's going to update to 93 and so on. So that's how you can use accuracy in F1 score. Let's see, you can also, this is what I wanted to show you, can also do something called a train epoch end, where you get all the outputs from training. So you would, in this case, you would return a dictionary of the things that you want to return. So maybe you also want to retu return the scores like this and why. Then you can use them in the train epoch end, um, sort of collect them by doing, uh, it's a dictionary, so output of scores, right? And then you you sort of take all of them, you uh, send them into uh, accuracy and compute, compute it all at once. That way it's going to be more efficient than running each batch separately as it can be, you know, uh, computed in a vectorized way. That's just an, an additional thing I wanted to add. It's not really that important in this example, but we're probably going to add it in the profiler video uh, because that's when we're going to see that it actually is pretty slow to do it this way. All right, so what do we want to do else? Uh, we want to compute or create our own metric as well. So I'm going to do, uh, just to show you the basics of how to sort of create your own custom metric. Now there's a bunch of more advanced things you can do. This is just to get you a flavor of how it looks like. But you can do something class my, my accuracy you can you inherit from metric you do a your init in no not that that was not <laughs> copilot is off here wait let's see all right so we do define init uh self whoa this is completely wrong by copilot all right self we're gonna do our super init uh and then we're gonna basically have a add state so basically, these are the things we're going to want to keep track of. In this case, uh, we actually want to have one that's correct. And we want to have one that's uh, total. Uh, then we want to have an update function. And we don't need to do that. So we're going to send in preds. And we're going to send in our target. So that is for each batch. And for each batch, we want, want to take the preds, which is going to be, yeah, torch.argmax of preds for the first dimension. And then we want to, we can assert here that preds is equal to target shape. And then we want to um, compute how many are correct by checking how many are actually equal. Uh, and I don't think we need to do float here, so we can just do this. And then we want to check the total, and the total is just the number of elements in target. So init is keeping track of the states, the sort of the ones that we want to keep track of during our training. And we set it to default to zero. And we also have this dist reduce function, which we set to uh, sum. This is if we have multiple GPUs and they're sort of coming um, uh, sort of when what we're going to do when we aggregate them, you could um, in this case, right, it doesn't matter which where they are training. We're just going to take the sum. So that's what we state here. Uh, and if we do, and then if for the update, that's what's going to be done for every batch. And finally, we need to have a compute, which is basically, you know, if we want to get the, the metric score, we run myaccuracy.compute, and we get what's internally stored. So this is going to be identical to what we already have here so we can instead do my accuracy is my accuracy and we can replace this here self.accuracy with my accuracy and we can rerun our code all right and here basically we can see that we get 88 percent after one epoch and then if we run it again we're going to get to 93 which is i think exactly the same as we got in during the last one 
Uh, all right, so I think that's um, a good introduction to metrics, how we use them. Um, and if you want to check out more, which metrics are available, uh, how you, you know, you can do a lot more and more advanced things as well. You can compute a metric that is, you're able to back propagate through, um, you know, th there's really a bunch of things you can do here. And I think uh, it's going to differ depending on your exact use case. So I recommend you just for that specific one, you, you look at the documentation and see how to implement it. But uh, now you have an idea and you know where to look. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and that it was helpful in learning about this. Uh, like the video if you thought it was useful and I hope to see you in the next video.